Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week, we have started studying how to be led by the Holy Spirit. We've already learned that it is God's will for you to be led. We've already learned there are other ways to be led than being led by the Spirit. That is being head-led or reason or logic-led, emotion-led, money-led, circumstance-led, other people's opinions-led. And those are all wrong choices. You, um, They will lead you in the wrong way. We need to learn to be Spirit-led. That's being led by the Holy Spirit in our spirit. We've also learned that according to Romans eight fourteen, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that word sons is the Greek word huios, which means a full grown, mature, adult, fully developed son. So we see that one of the characteristics of being spiritually mature, spiritually adult is being led by the Holy Spirit. And another opposite of that is being flesh led. That is being led by fleshly desires, letting your desires control your choices. I want that. I want that. You go to the store, you buy it because I want it. You pick this shirt or that dress or that car. I want it. I want it. And being ruled and controlled by your desires of the flesh is not being spirit led. That is being flesh led. That is a carnal Christian. It is a baby Christian An immature Christian is ruled by the desires of the flesh, but a spiritually mature Christian is led by the Holy spirit. Yesterday, we started talking about one of the qualifications to being led by the Holy spirit. And this is what we have to understand. Even before we talk about how to be led, we have to understand there are qualifications. This first qualification we started talking about yesterday is being willing. Willingness. Willingness to hear and obey what God is telling you to do. Another way to say willingness is openness. Openness. Being open-minded, open-hearted to what God is telling you. And we all know we've had experiences where we want to tell somebody something or we try even to tell them. We try to tell them, but they're not listening. They're not hearing it because they are not open. They might not be open to the subject. They may have closed their ears to the subject or maybe they just closed their ears to you. They don't want to hear you talk about that. And so they've closed their ears to either you or to that subject. And when they've closed their ears, they cannot hear. Well, that's exactly the way a lot of Christians are when God tries to speak to them. And we read scriptures in Hebrews today. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Another way to say that, do not close your ears. Do not close your ears to what God is saying to you. And there are times when our flesh does not want to hear what God is telling us, does not want to do what God is telling us to do. And, you know, there is a funny thing that happens when we hear something from the Holy Spirit that we don't want to hear. We can pretend that we didn't hear it. We can pretend that we didn't hear it. And then you start saying, hmm, I wonder what that was. Hmm, I don't know. Whatever that was, it's nothing to me. And you brush it off. Well, guess what happens when you brush it off? You harden your heart to being able to hear God speak to you more or in other areas. And the devil will come alongside and say, oh yeah, we don't know what that is. Hmm, That's some strange voice. I don't know what that is. And the devil will accommodate you saying, "Hmm, I don't know what that is. And if you deny the voice of the Holy Spirit when he speaks to you and say, I don't know what that is. I don't like that. And you close yourself to it, brush it aside, pretend that you didn't hear Don't pay attention. Ignore that thought, unction, 
prompting of the Holy Spirit, then what's going to happen the next time God speaks to you? He might speak to you about something else, but it's the same prompting thought or unction the same way that he did the last time. Well, if it wasn't God the last time, then who is it this time? There was a situation in my life a few years ago, and I was really open to it, but a thought came to my mind. And at first, the first time it came to my mind, I thought, oh, what's that? And I rebuked it. I don't think of that. I'm not thinking on that. No. And I rebuked it and I closed myself to it. And then a few weeks later, it came back to me again. And that time I wasn't so quick to close myself to that idea. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if that could be God. Well, let me just hold on to that and ponder that. You know, it says Mary pondered these things in her heart. It's okay to ponder things in your heart with an open heart. To to pray over them further to see if it's God and get a clarification from the Lord. That's okay. And so I was actually real busy at the time and I thought I'm going to hold that till I can get to prayer into my prayer place. And so I held it just on the side and I thought when I, and, and I was real busy for a couple of weeks, but knowing I was going to set aside time to pray over that idea that I had. And when I set myself apart later in prayer to seek God specifically about that idea, because it had come once and I had shut it out. I had cast it out. I had thought, no, that can't be God. But then it came back and it came to me again. And that next time I thought, hmm, I wonder if this could be God. And so when I went into prayer over it, I really put it before the Lord for about three days. And by the end of that, well, it was two or three days even. It's not long. And and this is one thing I'm encouraging you in this study. When we seek to hear God's voice, it does not take long. It doesn't. God is quick to answer. Quick. Very quick to answer when you ask him a question. And so it does not take long to hear him if you set yourself to hear. And so I had set myself in prayer, being open. God, is this idea you? Are you really bringing that to me? And within two or three days, this is what settled in my spirit. I thought, if that's not God, then I've never heard God. Because that's the same way the Holy Spirit has always led me. That's the same way he led me to the mission field. He led me from country to country. He led me to take this invitation and go to this church, go to this village. I always followed the unctions, the leadings of the Holy Spirit in my spirit. And the promptings, go here, go there, do this. Yes, this is right. No, that's wrong. Don't go there. Don't touch that. And I was practiced and experienced in following those unctions, promptings of the spirit of the Holy Spirit in my spirit. And I came to the conclusion where this idea was concerned because this was such a foreign idea to me. It really surprised me. It caught me off guard and it was taking me in a direction differently than the direction I had been going. And that's why At first, I didn't accept it, but I wasn't going to be totally closed. The next time it came to me, I began wondering, is this the Lord? And I came to this conclusion after I prayed a couple days. If that is not the Holy Spirit, then I've never heard the Holy Spirit. If that's not God, then I've never heard God because that is the same kind of unction and prompting that has come to me all my life 
to do the things that God called me to do and that I have been following all these years. And so I realized as foreign and strange as that idea had seemed at first, it was really God. It was God, but God had to bring it back to me several times in order for me to see that this could really be him. The first time it was so strange, I didn't accept it, but I I am not living my life in a way where I'm not willing to hear God. I'm living my life in a way that every day I desire to hear God. We have to desire his leading. And that that comes to another scripture. You have to desire to do his will. Psalm 40, verse 8. Look at that verse. Psalm 40, verse 8. It says in the King James, I delight to do your will Oh, my God, I delight to do your will. Oh, my God. And then in the New International Version, it says, I desire to do your will. Oh, my God. I have personally made that one of my big prayers. That's a prayer that I pray frequently and regularly. Uh, Lord, I desire to do your will. I delight to do your will. And there was a time when um, a few years ago also when I was in a place that I did not want to be in. My heart was somewhere else. But I made the choice while I was there to be willing to do his will. Being willing to do his will. And I, I prayed this very scripture again and again, over and over and over that whole time I was there because I needed his grace to help and his grace. This is something the Lord tell, told me many years ago. I can remember the time it was 12 years ago and the Lord spoke to me. The grace comes with the willingness. If you need the grace of God to help you in any situation, the grace to do it comes with a willing heart. That means when you open up your heart to say, Lord, I'm willing, I'm willing to do it, then comes in the grace. The grace comes upon you to do it. And the Lord showed me this, that if you resist his will, you are in the same act resisting the grace to do his will. If you resist his will, then you are also in the same act resisting his grace. God, I don't want to do it. I don't want to think about it. Then you're resisting not only him, but his grace to help you in time of need. And my goodness, we all need his grace to help in time of need. We are all desperate for his grace. His grace helps us every day. But if you resist his will, you are resisting his grace as well. And So when you resist what God is telling you, if you close yourself to what he is telling you, you're not able to hear and you will not know what to do. And this leads you into greater confusion because the darkness will get darker. The light gets lighter when you accept his will, when you are open to hear his voice and you are open to his word. The, the Bible says the entrance of his word brings light, light. The entrance of his word brings light. 
So when you open your heart to his word, which is his voice speaking to you, leading you, telling you, and you open yourself to it, then it brings light. And in the light, it also says in the Bible, in your light, we see light. And in Proverbs 4, it says the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. So in his light, we see light. It grows brighter and brighter. So what does that mean? When you're open in your heart, willing in your heart to hear God's voice, to hear what he wants to tell you, to listen to what he is dealing with you about, then when you are open to his word, the entrance of his word will bring light to you. Then you will see. You will see clearly the light of revelation, the light of understanding will come to you and you will see. You'll go, oh, I see. Because you are open to hear, you are open to his word, what he would say to you. But in the opposite, when you close yourself, close your ears, Harden your heart. No, I don't want to hear that. Then you are going into greater darkness. You are going from darkness into greater darkness. And it will bring to you and you open yourself to a spirit of deception and confusion. Yes, it's dangerous to resist the Holy Spirit. Because if you are not listening to the Holy Spirit, who else is there to listen to? The devil. Jesus said the devil is a liar and the father of lies. So if you are closing yourself to hearing God, then who are you opening yourself to? The liar, the devil, the deceiver. And if you are not open to God, then you are opening yourself to greater deception and confusion. The darkness will get darker. And that's why people go from one level of darkness to a deeper level of darkness, greater deception and greater deception and greater and greater and greater till they are totally deceived. It's amazing the deception that some people get into about God and about, you know, all kinds of things. It's because they started with one, one little rejection of the Holy Spirit's voice. One rejection of what God was saying to them. They closed themselves. They started towards darkness. You see, if you are turning away from the light, where are you heading? Into darkness. If you are turning away from the light, then which way are you heading? You're heading into darkness. And that is how so many people have entered into great deception. So greatly deceived because they were not willing to listen to the truth. They closed their ears to the truth. And so because they denied the truth, they were taught and listened to deception. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Timothy 4, 1, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, that's the last days, that's the time we live in now, some will abandon the faith And follow deceiving spirits, deceiving spirits. You see, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. God is light. 
God is light. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the devil is the deceiver. And the demons come to deceive. So it says they will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. Now, the conscience, we'll talk about this on another broadcast too, but your conscience is one way that you hear God. Because one person says it's the voice, I've heard some teachers say it's the voice of your spirit, but that might not be a whole or an entire definition, but your conscience can hear and know this is right. This is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. And if you continually ignore that, it says you get seared as with a hot iron. What happens when a hot iron sears something? It gets melted And then it becomes insensitive. Have you ever burned yourself so badly? And I hope not. But that you now have no sense of feeling in that place where you were burned because the nerve endings were damaged. The nerve endings were damaged and now you can't feel anything in that with that part that was burned. Well, that's what happens. It says, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. That is also their ability to hear God has been seared. Now they are no longer sensitive. They've even think of the the tips of your fingers. Your fingertips are designed by God with very, very sensitive nerve endings, very sensitive nerve endings in your fingertips. And you want that sensitivity. You want that sensitivity to feel things. But what if it gets burned? You can't feel anything anymore. You've become hardened, scarred, seared, insensitive. Then when you become insensitive to God, you don't hear him anymore. Many people have so hardened themselves against God, they don't even hear him talk anymore. Some people have so hardened themselves in sin, in such vile sin, that at first their conscience used to prick them. Their conscience would convict them and say, don't do that, don't do that. But they kept persisting, persisting, persisting until they seared their conscience. Now their conscience doesn't even tell them it's wrong anymore. Now they've convinced themselves that it's okay. Now they have convinced themselves that this thing that they're doing is okay. They have seared their conscience. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't become hardened, seared, and insensitive. The thing we need to do is develop our sensitivity. Develop our spiritual nerve endings to be so sensitive that you can touch something and know what it is. Think about a blind person who reads Braille with their fingertips. They read the Braille on those dots. You know, I cannot read Braille because to me, a dot is a dot. It doesn't make any sense, but they have made their fingertips so sensitive. They can read the Braille. You need to develop your holy, your spirit to hear the Holy Spirit becoming so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that you hear every little prompting he gives you. Don't harden yourself. Make, make yourself sensitive. Sensitize your spirit today to the Holy Spirit. How do you do it? By saying, Holy Spirit, Please teach me. I'm willing to do your will. I desire to do your will. I delight to do your will. Show me what I must do. I am willing. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we will continue this on Monday. All next week, we will continue studying how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you again to partner with us in supporting this radio program. If this radio program is blessing you and encouraging you, teaching you, giving you fresh revelation, strengthening your faith, helping you hear from God, helping you to grow spiritually, I encourage you and I invite you to partner with us in supporting this radio program financially. And this radio program is good ground for your good seed because we are continuing continually getting testimonies of how this radio program and the Bible teaching is changing people's lives. And I'd love to hear from you. If this radio program has impacted you at all, I want you to write to me and tell me that. I would love to hear your testimonies. And these testimonies are a blessing. And everyone who partners with us in this ministry also receives reward and harvest in the kingdom of God for the lives that are changed by the power of the word of God and the people who are saved and healed and delivered from different bondages in their lives. When you partner, you also share in the reward and harvest. So to support this ministry, you can write to us at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 1418. That's 1418 Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. Or go online to give online at Victorious faith.co. And we also have some new instructions there on how you can give bank to bank. It is free. It is safe. It is fast. It is easy to give bank to bank. This instructions are on the website. Now join me again next week. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.